this a story was sent to me that is some I could probably force the parallel, but there's no need to do that. Th this story was sent to me recently, and uh, I did want to at least talk a little bit about it because it's, it's, it's the gutting of liberal arts at, at public comprehensive universities like SUNY Potsdam, the humanities are being hollowed out. So whether it was on EYL the other day or, or elsewhere where there's been discussion around HBCUs, around ivory tower scholars, one of the points I keep coming back to is the assault on liberal arts as part historically an assault on black radical consciousness. So, you know, one of the parallels that I could draw thematically this, this morning could be uh, the, the, the nominally black radical fantasy of STEM related fields leading to some revolutionary adjustment in relationships is itself born out of a white supremacist, capitalist, conservative logic to suppress liberal arts and, and tendencies toward critical thinking and radical ideology. This story, broadly speaking, is pointing again to that problem, but making a, a couple of very interesting points. One, challenging the claim that STEM-related fields offer more employment potential for anyone, which is uh, questionable. And then the other, that those of us in academia are automatically in some freer or more powerful place relative to other sectors of the economy and relative to the institution of higher education. And I think this article further challenges some of that. So I just wanted to look at a little bit. So David Curry writes here, the State University of New York Pots at, at New York at Potsdam, where I teach, recently fired seven tenured faculty members, at least one of whom had worked there for more than 35 years. The precise number of contract non-renewals on top of this is a closely guarded secret. 18 programs have, discon have been discontinued and more have been so depleted as to not have any full-time faculty members at all. This, it was recently announced, is just the first round of cuts. In May 2023, our faculty senate resoundingly passed a motion to censure, objecting to the opaque process guiding the cuts. I highlighted faculty senate there because we at Morgan could only aspire through fantasy to have that level of, of, of governance and involvement. Uh, we, we are reduced to a university council, which has even less input or certainly oversight. Um, In September, the faculty Senate passed another resolution calling for a pause in the implementation of the financial plan until financial justifications for that plan were shared with the faculty. Both resolutions were ignored. The supporting data never came. So in other words, the university claims it's going broke, fires a bunch of people, including those with tenure, and no one, <clears throat> and no explanation need be really outlined or, or fully explained or given. This is a tale that is already old from the retelling. The steep cuts at West Virginia University brought the story into national focus, but similar realignments, transformations, and restructurings have been unfolding for the last three years. At Emporia State University in Kansas, 30 faculty members were laid off in September 2022 because of extreme financial pressure. SUNY Fredonia and the University of North Carolina at Greensboro have recently announced planned program and personnel cuts that follow the template to a T. Marquette, Valparaiso, Wright State, the list is constantly growing. The template is worth considering even if it hasn't yet reached your campus.
In May 2021, the American Association of University Professors published a, a prescient report, COVID-19 and Academic Governance, noting the post-pandemic trend to realign institutions suffering from enrollment problems. Trustees and presidents of many institutions suddenly began operating in a state of panic after years of fiscal mismanagement, seized upon the pandemic to assert the need to right size, be nimble, realign, innovate, be decisive, and take bold action by unilaterally, unilaterally altering their institution's governance structure, curriculum, and labor force, thus creating an acute crisis in academic governance. The baneful results have included the loss of faculty members' careers and livelihoods, the cheapening of students' educations, and the transformation of institutions' identities. The results were no accident. As an interim dean at the University of Colorado at Boulder put it, never waste a good pandemic. And if this sounds eerily reminiscent of what was said uh, shortly after Katrina, remember one of the politicians down there wanting to get rid of the poor black community said, something to that effect, that Mother Nature had done what public policy had not been able to, to, to do for years. So never waste a good pandemic. In 2020, Kenneth McCure, the, pre the last president of the now defunct Medell University, suspended and then rewrote the faculty handbook, laid off several f professors, cut programs, and rescinded tenure. I believe that this is an opportunity to do more than just tinker around the edges. We need, bold, we need to be bold and decisive, he wrote to the faculty, a new model in the future of higher education. In a 2023 speech amid the academic transformation that would lead to the elimination of dozens of programs at West Virginia University, President E. Gordon G. offered a similar sentiment. Imagine a garden that is filled with flowers but is never pruned. We have been overgrown for a very long time. So, by the way, I, I've forgotten, this is not the same article. There was another article I just read, I think also in the Chronicle uh, of Higher Education that was talking about and had the numbers to, to the data to back it. But the conclusion, simply put, was that uh, uh, struggles with employment rates and pay are about the same, whether you're talking about STEM-related fields or liberal arts. And the and and they they said something to the effect that that how you are paid has uh, has more to do the differences in STEM versus liberal arts pay and employment rates is about the same as it would be uh, moving from one part of the country to another in terms of the value of the money in your in your account. So it's not unnoticeable but it's not as significant as people. So this idea that when people say, what are you gonna do with that philosophy degree? You could ask equally of what are you gonna do with that engineering degree or that business degree? This, this promise of wealth at the end of, of, of STEM or, or you know, uh, as opposed to liberal arts is, is equally fanciful because at the end of the day, we still live in a capitalist society. <laughs> so the, the idea that we could just move into STEM and that would somehow allow us to to circumvent the ravages of of a of a of a, of a colony is is missing the point but i did want to at least raise this 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 point about the state of academia and then just quickly that that if 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 people's job if people are in overworked that is, faculty have too many classes, too many students are underpaid, have less resources, less health care. It impacts the quality of the education in the classroom. So even civilizationally, it is illogical to, to set up higher education in this country the way it's currently constituted. Uh, and it also is absurd to think whether we are tenured full professor faculty or adjuncts or whether we are not in academia at all, that if somehow you are in these fields or, or areas of the economy that you are somehow automatically safer and more powerful than anybody else. They're literally erasing what the idea of tenure is supposed to mean uh, and, and subverting anything that would have anything to do with, with, uh, workers' rights and protection. And we are in, at least in Maryland, an ununionized workforce. 
So. All right. Another quick shift and we'll come back, get to uh, sort of that, that back on that traditional parallel here in just a second. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.